Hello, basketball fans! Welcome, welcome, welcome! I'm DC Hewitt here for Fantasy Basketball Analyzer, and I'm here to help you get ready for week six of the fantasy basketball season by breaking down the schedule. First, let's take a quick hit around the league with some kind of bullet point high level notes. Michael Porter Jr. is finally back from his double COVID absence, which will make a lot of people happy because you've been hanging on to him for a long time without a game. Clint Capella is like, gone nuts and decided to get a triple-double with blocks, and he's been playing amazing, which is exciting just in general for everyone to see crazy good basketball. It also will have an impact once we start talking about defensive efficiency. Um, Alec Burks is back, and he's rostered in 55% of the league, so he's out there in about half. He's not really going to come up in the context of this video, because New York only plays three games, it's not that great of a week, but he's still worth owning, so I'm just right up front, I don't want to bury the lead. Take a look for Alec Burks, because he's back. Also take a look at D Danilo Gallinari, he's finally back. Didn't do much yet. Um, he's rostering 65% of the leagues, but take a look. If people got frustrated or cut, maybe you don't have an IR, now's the time to try and jump on him before people notice for getting ready for next week. Oh, and in other good news, Miles Turner is back. People were worried about his broken hand and lost him for a couple of games. He came back and played 43 minutes. So I don't think we're going to worry too much about that lingering and being out for like weeks or anything like that. All right. Without further ado, let's get into the schedule. For schedule videos, we always set up the foundation by looking at the defensive efficiency and the pace of play. So take a look. You can kind of see it, right? Teams at the top, we want to attack. Teams at the bottom, we're a little more fearful of. No one's ever a stay away matchup which is something to know, especially if you're playing your DFS, right? So some high-level notes, let's take a look at this here. New Orleans stands out because they've got the red, red pace, which means you don't really want to face them, right? But they've also got a really bad defense, and I'm not trying to, like, hype on that too much. We've, I've been talking about them the last couple of weeks. But right now they've got the 26th overall defense, and that's based on that over the last two weeks, they are the 30th rated defense. This matches more what the eyes were saying to me, and that's why I was bringing up a couple weeks ago of looking at them. They just didn't look amazing. They'll be a little better than this. They are not the worst defense in the league, but they definitely weren't a team to be scared of because of defense. The pace kind of averaged them out, but still, they've worked their way from two weeks ago. The numbers are saying totally avoid them. Not so much. Now, a team that's kind of the opposite if we're looking at pre-schedule, I hinted at it by talking about Clint Capella. Look at Atlanta down there. Their pace is 103, so it puts them kind of in the middle of the pack, so it's not influencing it too heavy one way or the other. But that 107 defense, they are right now the sixth-rated defense based on efficiency in the entire league. And if you'd asked me rolling into the season, that is not what I would have expected, right? Like Cleveland, Minnesota, Atlanta, these were teams that were, like, worth attacking last year and they were what I assumed which is why we don't do the video the very first week of the season I said just play your starters so Atlanta's doing well Clint Capella is helping with that but it's not a one-man wrecking crew right like the the team's just playing better they're holding their opponents down a little bit it's worth noting so they're like I said they're six overall they're the fourth rated defense over the last two weeks but over the last two weeks they played Minnesota twice and I'm sure that helped when you play just a really bad team so it is still early in the season. We've played five weeks of games. That's all the numbers we have. So as you kind of like look at it, they are still going to be influencing, right? They're moving up and down a little much. Speaking of this, like I've been given this two week idea. Brooklyn's got their rebuilt roster, right? And it's something we want to take a look at here. Brooklyn is not listed in the teams you want to attack, but they do have one of the quickest paces. And I think they're going to creep in there. Despite them having superstars, it seems like this team might be built more to like win by scoring 199 points to 160 points versus any like defensive stops, right? We've never thought much of Harden's defense, and they got rid of Jared Allen, so they only have DeAndre Jordan you know, as a big man. So there's probably going to be some opportunity to attack Brooklyn going forward. It's something we want to monitor. Right now, they're the 21st overall defense, which isn't great. But they're actually the 28th defense over the last two weeks. But, like, Harden just came in. Kyrie was missing time. I don't want to put too much in that. But let's take a look at it. It, I think they're going to hover up here as a team to really go at. Because they're playing fast and they're just not going to play great defense. Which is going to give you a chance to put up a lot of numbers like Sexton did this week. Okay, let's take all of these numbers and go ahead and apply it over. Take a look at the schedule. 
Looking at the schedule for week six, it's worth noting right away that I have Memphis is only having two games, and that's because all their games were canceled this week, right? They had four games postponed. That rolls into next week, Monday, which means they only have a two-game week. And if you're in a weekly locks league, makes them pretty impossible to play. As much as I love Ja, and they've got a good matchup against Chicago, and you're not scared of the Spurs later in the week, two games, and we don't technically know if they're going to be back. We assume they will. It's too risky and in a weekly league, you just got to stay away from Memphis. I also adjusted Sacramento down to only having three games because they lose that game against Memphis. Doesn't mean it's necessarily stay away. It's just worth noting. Related to that, doing the schedule videos is getting a little harder this year, right? It, it's okay. I'm still talking basketball and there's harder gigs in the world. But, you know, with the COVID cancellations and stuff like that, it's a little hard to give you the best advice projecting out for a full week and saying, here you go. But we're all going through it together and we'll still have some fun. There aren't a lot of teams that, like, jumped out at me as, oh, man, I really want to attack that. Like, Golden State starts the week strong. They get Minnesota twice, which is great. And then they play Phoenix, Detroit. So that's a pretty good matchup. But there's not a ton of guys there that I can recommend, like, hey, pick these guys up and plug them in. Lock them in all week, right? So I'm going to focus on maybe the streaming matchups you can really do in daily change leagues. The best team this week for streaming purposes are the Clippers because they play on Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. There's only three games Tuesday, four games Thursday, six games Sunday. They're the lowest volume days, which means if you have a Clipper you can plug in, you're going to get to use them over any other teams. Unfortunately, the Clippers don't have a ton of streaming options. So the names I can recommend to you is Batum's a little over the 50% own threshold I try to talk about, but Nick Batum will give you a little bit of everything. He's only at 52% rostered, so he might be available if you want to take a look now before other people notice what next week's schedule looks like. Pat Beverly is never going to wow you. I brought him up last video, but it's rostered in 20% of leagues. So if you're in daily change league, he's not going to hurt you either. You can plug him in there. And to a lesser extent, Marcus Morris and Zubach. You know, Morris is 26%. Zubach is 22%. You can grab them. You can plug them in there. The real advantage here is just how their schedule's falling. I mean, you get to play Atlanta, which I just said, like, oh, it's a good defense. But you're not going to play anyone else on Tuesday. So if you're in a daily change league and have the space, these are guys I want to look for. To, to get them in there, they're going to help your team overall in your head-to-head -head matchup for the week. The second best schedule is Houston, but I do want to mention a little caution because Houston only has three games. The nice thing is that they play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. So Tuesday and Thursday, you can start the week and definitely play these guys in the low-volume days. And Saturday's not crazy. There's eight games. Eight games is right on that. You might not get to use them threshold, right? The reason I'm saying use caution here is that Tuesday games against Washington, and we haven't seen the Wizards play in forever. So as far as we know, they're playing Tuesday. They get to play the Wizards, but maybe not. So take a look at that. My, my biggest thing actually here is over 50% owned anyway, but Eric Gordon, right? I mentioned last week to pick up Eric Gordon. Take a look. If he's out there, grab Eric Gordon. The live number as of recording this is that he's 53% rostered. So just take a look. He falls into that area, like I mentioned, Alec Burks at the top of the video. See if he's available, because he's the type of person you can pick up and play all season when he's not hurt. Staying on the theme of people you can pick up and play all season long, Jeremy Lamb. Indiana's got a four-game week next week, and he's only rostered in 32% of leagues. Jeremy Lamb should be owned way more, and you want to get on that right now. If I switch over to the back-to-backs, You'll notice I've got Toronto highlighted there. That's because Indiana is actually doing a back-to-back -back rolling from week five into week six. So if you're watching a Saturday and pick up Lamb right now, you can play him for this back-to-back, -back, and then he gets a couple games against Charlotte later in the week. It's a pretty good matchup, and he should be owned. So I would want to hop on that. The little preview is going to be probably my top waiver pickup in tomorrow's waiver video. And if you're watching it later than tomorrow, here's the link to the waiver video. Other guys I want to take a look at, kind of previewing what the waivers are going to be for the video coming up. Kendrick Nunn is rostered in 40% of leagues. Miami's got four games. A little bit of caution here because they still don't have Jimmy Butler and stuff, so this might not last all week as a piece of advice, but he's been playing really well. And if you sort it to only like over the last week or two weeks, you know, it's really just the average from the last week. He's up there in top 50 range. Kendrick Nunn could probably settle... You know, at the end of the season, I'd expect top 100 value for him. And he's available in 60% of leagues. So pick him up, 
roll them out there for this four game week and then we can revisit it in a week or not if it's really worth it. If you're desperate for other options, if you're trying to find a big or something, Nas Reed's got four games. You know, if you need to find a center, he's still filling in for Cat. It's an option. Wayne Ellington's been crazy for Detroit. Don't know that it's going to last, but they've got a four game week and he's only rostered in 12% of leagues. So he's definitely available if you got to pick up a guy and plug him in for four games. It's not a great schedule, but, you know, we're looking for a hot hand and we'll do more waivers tomorrow. Jeff Green's interesting if you're looking for, I guess, a big, um, but he's got a lot of flexibility, right? So he's got four game week, he's 25% rostered, and they added forward eligibility. So he's small forward, power forward, and center now in Yahoo's game. So he's definitely worth taking a look. That's all the extra names I have for you. I've got the back to back graphics up here, but looking at it, there's not a ton we can learn from this, right? Brooklyn doesn't have any back-to-backs. Great, so we're not too worried about guys having to rest. Houston only has three games, so they don't end up with any back-to-backs. Great, not worrying about Eric Gordon resting specifically because of back-to-backs. Washington has a back-to-back, but we haven't seen them play in forever, so that's assuming that they have games. And as far as we know, Westbrook's still hurt, so I'm not so focused on him resting because of a back-to-back as he may not be back because of that thigh contusion anyway. So the only team out of our like normal culprits where we worry about like older players or perpetually injured players resting because of injury is the Clippers have a back-to-back. They've got a four-game week, so there's that Miami-Orlando backup back-to-back in the middle. Maybe you want to take a look out for that. Um, Looking at the schedule, too, just a little different topic here. Uh, On Friday, the Knicks play Cleveland, and when I was marking down all the strength of schedule stuff, it just stood out to me that that is where both the Knicks and Cleveland show up in the the least value, interesting uh, matchups for defensive stats. And if you had brought up at the start of the year, like, hey, you know what game I'm really going to want to avoid in DFS? Cleveland versus the Knicks. I would not have believed you, but that's why we do this. So I'm happy to do it for you. I'm happy you're here watching. Thank you and go out and win your week.